Hello and welcome back to the Ultra HD Gamer and I have another computer video and this computer uh, specifically is not a custom build computer it is an old compact it's just in a custom case because the compact had a bad uh, power button or well, the compact case had a bad power button and I did not have a replacement power button to um, put in the case because it's so old it's like something I don't really have spare parts for, so I just put it in this Antec case, because why not? I had it laying around, and it's large enough to hold the full ATX board. Uh, so this computer, specifically, was from the late 1990s, around 1999, uh, 2000, I think, actually more like 1998, I don't remember, but it has a Pentium 3 and a Voodoo. So this computer currently does not have a hard drive, and, uh, no operating system, obviously, because there's no hard drive. But everything else is complete with it, other than uh, some other things, like the floppy and uh, optical drive. As you can see, those are not populated. I have them laying around. I do not know if they work or not. I may. Uh, one day, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to test. But as you can see, there's some of the front I.O., the power button, indicator lights, a reset button, uh, two 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks, one... Well, one of them is a microphone jack, and two USB ports, and a firewire, and some other weird-looking port for some, well, not obscure, but older media-type thingamajiggy. So, going to the back, you can see the motherboard. I do not have a correct um, uh, back plate for the motherboard. It won't fit onto the case, because, uh, yeah, it's kind of too big for it. I have the IO um, shield somewhere, uh, but I mean, I'm not going to look for it now. Uh, the power supply inside here is actually kind of comes with the case, and so, uh, yeah, it, this, this does not have the original power supply, that's what I'm trying to say, and that just did not come to my head for some reason, probably because it's 10 o'clock at night. And that's when I make videos, and that's probably when I'm, like, not really, like, ready to think about anything. But anyway, uh, there's the Voodoo, as you can see with the VGA port. Uh, there's two serial ports, and one parallel, and two USB, probably 1.1 ports, because um, of the age. And two PS2 ports, which are always very nice to have. I only have one screw in this, uh, holding the case panel together. I actually kind of want to get more older computers, I kind of have an interest in them, and I have a ton of RAM for them. I have, uh, I think a bunch of, I think it's PC100 memory, and some older, uh, Sims. Uh, I don't even remember what types they are. I don't really uh, delve into old computers as much, sadly, so I have more experience with the newer uh, 478 to current day computers than I do with um, pre, like, netburst era computers. I kind of want to change that, but anyway, uh, let's start talking about this. So as you can see, this is the memory. These are the memory slots. I have three populated... Uh, well, three out of four um, slots populated. And uh, as you can see, there is one capacitor that is kind of going, as you, as you know, it's 20 years old, so duh, it'd be going bad. And you can see the Voodoo. It's a Voodoo 3 2000, 8 megabyte. I have not really messed around with it. All I know is that it works and it's worth a bit of money. Between 60 and $150. dollars i am thinking more 60 bucks, but that is pretty nice as I got this computer from the trash about three years ago. Uh, this also has, I think, a slot 2 Pentium 3. I'm probably wrong in some way, somehow, because I'm not too great uh, with older computers. Well, like, really, really old computers. I mean, I call this older, but, I mean, most people would call it really, really old because it's older than me, and it's 20 years old. It's actually over 20 years old. It's probably, like, 21, looking at, like, the, the date... That might not be the manufacturer date, though. As you can see, it still has the original CMOS. I'm surprised it has not bloated yet. Um, 
I think that's nor that's the South Bridge and that's North Bridge. And a, like two ISA slots. I think these are ISA. I'm not entirely sure. Um, if anyone knows more about older computers than me, because I'm kind of an idiot at that, uh, then you can correct me. Uh, these are PCI slots, and then there's an AGP port right there. I don't remember what type of AGP port. Let me remove this graphics card. As you can see, here's the Voodoo. Pretty epic. It is one of the legendary cards. Yeah, I'm not really that great at identifying AGP because I also don't have many AGP computers and I have not done many much research on AGP era computers too because, I mean, most of my computers are 775 and most of the Netburst computers, well, 478 computers that I've messed with and AMD equivalents don't really have an AGP port or if they do, I don't really have many AGP graphics cards to mess around with. I do have an, an HP computer that I've made a video about like three years ago. It's completely trash, more trash than this video. Please don't watch it. But it's about some HP AMD Athlon 64 uh, 3300 plus computer and that has a universal AGP. I'm not entirely sure about this AGP because, like I said, I don't know much about AGP ISA, all of that. I probably will do more research one day. But anyway, uh, oh, there's another bad cap right there, unfortunately. So there's two bad caps on this board, not just one. That's unfortunate. Well, actually, three, four are starting to go. Uh, one of them has already went boo-boo. So if I were to recap this motherboard, which might be worth it, I might recap all of these caps, and I think they're the same as these ones. I'm not sure. Yeah, they look like they're the same. Let me turn on the light, because I can't really read them. You can't really see them. Yeah, those look like the same uh, capacitors, so I, I'm pretty sure those have the same um, rating. Anyway, as you can see, uh, there's actually no um, CPU power um, on the motherboard, because it's so old. It just uses uh, this... 24 pin, I think. Yep. So I'm gonna remove some of the memory, actually all of them. As you can see, original compact memory uses Toshiba chips. Um, doesn't say the amount, I don't really feel like counting. I might make uh, another video on it. I think this has 168 megs of memory. I'm not entirely sure. Let me take out the second slot, or second memory dim. Very neat stuff. And I do have some more memory for this, so I might upgrade it in the future. Okay, so this is some IBM uh, 32 megabyte stick of PC100. I think it's PC100, I don't know. Uh, memory. <laughs> Which is pretty interesting. Like I keep babbling about. Let's try to stick it back in one handed. Oh, and as you can see, there's a huge mess of mustard cables and other stuff that isn't too good for the computer. Whatever. And like I said, I have no uh, hard drive for this system, sadly. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. I don't really have. Kind of booting up into it. I might actually, actually, I do have one IDE drive. It's Max Tor, a uh, 40 gig. I have two, but one of them does not work. So yeah, that doesn't really count. Anyway, let me try to stick this back in very incompetently. Oops. something wrong. Yeah, I'm always worried about this, especially doing it one hand. Oh, and as you can see, I did not, like, really screw in the motherboard fully. 
So as you can see, you can see the Pentium 3 CPU. Well, the cooler, you can't really see the CPU. I think I repasted it, like, three years ago. Hmm, Intel Confidential. Yeah, I'm not sure, but anyway. I mean, I don't know a whole lot about this computer, so yeah, I'll make a second video uh, more in more detail. Uh, actually, maybe messing around with it, turning it on, and if I can like find a Windows 98 disk, which I probably won't in the next few minutes, uh, I may do an install of Windows. And I've never tried Windows 98, so that'll be a first for me because. I am not really uh, able to procure procure hardware uh, that can run Windows 98 at the moment, or that is time cor period correct, including hard drives. And, and yeah, those are easy to get, but you know, like I haven't really been buying all that stuff anyway. The Epic Voodoo. Oh yeah, look at it. It was made made by 3DFX Interactive. And also, I remember uh, looking at this and it said made in Mexico. Yep, product of Mexico. Back when everything wasn't made in China. Yeah, nowadays everything made in well, actually stuff made in China is starting to become half decent. But if you go and buy cheap crap in China, it'll the next day, obviously because I mean less quality control and all of that. Also, China's starting to catch up in terms of their own technological de development because uh, we're all sending them their our technology and they get to manufacture it and they also. Uh, take a bit of information too. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about that because I do not feel like getting political about any of that sort of stuff because, I mean, yeah, why, why should I? I have some Chinese genes in me too, which is... Eh, I'm not going to talk about that anyway. I am in America, and that is all that matters, and school too. I do not want to get political. Let's just look at this Antec power supply. I'm, I'm kind of making a fool of myself now at this uh, 12th minute of the video. I might accidentally trigger some people or stuff, or yeah, I'm sounding like a jerk. I don't know. But anyway, I'm starting to ramble, and when I ramble, I say random BS, which is not so good. And I need to stop it. Okay, back to the computer video. So this is a 360 watt anti power supply with a nice little dusty fan. I actually opened it up and I saw some bad capacitors in it, but I mean, this is the only power supply I have that will work. Well, well, technically all power supplies will work, but this is the only power supply I have since this is the power supply that came with the case that will like fit into the um, computer. Because of the odd um, look, as you can see, uh, where the cable, the cables, like literally come out where the plug plugs in. As you can see, there's a huge little uh, wiry thingy that goes all the way to here, and boop, comes out of the back. And there's another like fan grill thing which has no fan in it and three IDE slots and some other stuff like capacitors and inductor coil yeah I'm starting to run out of stuff to say that I actually know okay looking at the motherboard model number it is an ABBX6 it is a compact motherboard and it is I think a slot 2 uh, era motherboard with slot 2 Pentium 3 which I think is at 700 megahertz I don't know I have not powered this computer on since 2018 and it's 2020 now so yeah that's pretty epic well actually I think I powered it last powered on last year I'm not entirely sure I don't have time to mess with all my stuff anymore sadly like I did in the old days but stuff, um, 
on this computer is a lot more, well, I guess, like, user replaceable than newer hardware, unless you go to, like, um, higher end hardware, like your gaming PC, you can, like, still upgrade stuff, but unfortunately for newer computers, I might grab one just for lols, and this is actually a fairly old computer, let me pause the video. So, I'm back with another computer, and like I said, for newer computers, unfortunately, uh, like this one, this is in a slimline case, but it was originally in a full AT micro ATX case tower, um, but I didn't really have much space because the case was a full micro ATX tower, and uh, this computer did not use an actual power supply, just a barrel laptop power supply, as you can see. Um, I did a case transfer to an old uh, AMD Athlon 64 era um, slimline case that has the ATX form factor, which is kind of nice, but I'm gonna show you something that is relatively frustrating that's on a lot of newer computers these days now, um, which is the first one, having no 24-pin uh, connector for the power supply. Oops, I completely forgot about that little screw right there that is preventing me from opening up the computer, and I should be doing homework right now, but whatever. I'm doing this instead. Let's see if I can open it. Nope, I cannot. Actually, I can. This is hard work doing it one-handed. I'm gonna flip it over. Sorry for not being able to see my full video. There you go. It's all opened up. And as you can see, another big mess, but yeah, I kind of made this real quickly because I didn't have that much time to make it, and the SSD was taped on because I had no hard drive cat. That's awesome. Uh, I might actually properly do it one day. I'm not sure. I might screw it on, um, make some, some sort of a uh, hard drive caddy from other computer cases, as I have a ton of other computers in here. Yeah. But yeah, one of my other complaints is that there's no PCIe slot, so you can't upgrade the motherboard. Graphics card, not motherboard. And, like, some CPUs, this one at least is upgradable, but kind of limited in terms of upgradability because of, um how small the power supply is. I think this is a 165 watt. No, I don't think so. It's a, it's a, like, I think a 60, I can't do math right now. Uh, let's just do, two. this is like a 90 something watt power supply. I think it's a 95 watt. I'm not entirely sure. I am unable to do any math right now because yeah, it's, it's nice and it's 10 o'clock and I don't feel like uh, doing any multiplication at 10 o'clock or 10.30 or something. But anyway, let's get on to, on to the actual computer stuff. And not how bad at math I am, even though I'm taking advanced math. Well, not advanced math, but like, you know, Algebra 2. But yeah, I'm terrible at that. Also geometry. But I mean, this computer, in terms of upgradability, is actually relatively upgradable, other than, like I said, no PCIe slot and also uh, kind of limited in CPU upgradability. This has an i3-2120T, and that has a limited power, like, well, it's a lower lower power CPU. I think it's a 35 watt CPU. I'm probably wrong, I don't really remember. But yeah, it's, it's more power efficient than the um, other Sandy Bridge counterparts. So I can't, say, swap an i5-2400 in this, um, because of power limitations, which is rather unfortunate because I actually wanted to do that. And I also wanted to add a graphics card, but this does not have any uh, PCIe slot. Now, the nice thing about it is that every computer has USB ports, so I can probably add a USB to PCI, PCIe uh, slot thingy and maybe uh, have a little makeshift computer gaming, like, gaming computer with uh, maybe a Sandy i5 if it had more power, but yeah, newer computers don't even have what I have here, which is an upgradable CPU and upgradable memory. Newer computers actually have the memory soldered on to the board, or, like, they actually solder the DIMMs, but yeah, it's kind of, like, frustrating nowadays, and they also use, um, BGA on their CPUs now, because, I mean, I guess that 
kind of like save space and it's cheaper to just solder the CPU onto the board. But that also limits upgradability. At least the CPU is semi upgradable and it's on the 1155 socket, which is a very notorious, well, a very popular socket. It's, it's actually a legendary socket in my opinion because it's just cheap. So much price performance, at least in 2020 and for the next few years. Uh, 1155 is the new socket 775, which is epic. But yeah, I'm starting to make a bit of a very long random computer video that kind of veered off my um, little uh, Pentium 3 computer adventure. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, kind of my part one with like multiple computer. I'm just going to title this a uh, random computer video. But yeah, as you know, I've wasted 20 minutes and 50 seconds on this video. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't know what to say, I'm just kind of rambling. Oh, yeah, and also something else that's not really upgradable on newer computers now is the hard drive, or SSD. Sometimes they even solder that on, too, which is great. Thank you, Apple, for soldering your RAM and hard drives onto your MacBook's motherboard. That kind of makes repairability and data recovery extremely hard, which sucks. Now, the good thing is that most computers, well not most, but a good portion of desktops that aren't laptops still have upgradable memory and or upgradable storage and possibly an upgradable CPU, especially if you go into the higher end computers with um, uh, an external, a discrete graphics card, not external, I don't know why I'm saying that and actual 3.5 millimeter hard, not millimeter, inch hard drives. And uh, yeah, f more like full ATX cases, but I mean, everything as a whole is starting to get smaller and that makes upgradability harder because you kind of have to sacrifice that for uh, smaller space, not space, space. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble now in this 22 minute video. I'm gonna go back and put this computer together. I mean. It's just a huge mess. Kind of a meme in my opinion. But anyway, yeah, I don't even have this connected. Let's see, can I even no, I'm not gonna bother. I don't even think that can have a connector. Yeah, I just had another motherboard and I don't really have have uh, any pins on a motherboard to connect to it. And I also have a stuck screw in there. Yeah, this is an old case. Uh, I had another computer and that didn't work. Had a bad uh, graphics chip and then the power supply failed. So that's nice. And I actually kind of didn't know what else was wrong with it because the power supply failed and I could not really um, fix it because it did not use a standard ATX uh, power supply, a 24 pin used like one of those little itty bitty ones that I didn't have any power supplies. I still don't have any power supplies that have that specific like micro 24 pin connector thingy. Rather unfortunate and I'm not gonna bother picking one up because they are expensive. They're like 30 or 40 bucks which is expensive in my books for a computer that's worth less than like 20 bucks itself too. I could probably one day just pick up another one of these at like a thrift store if they still sell them to people. Well, actually, people always find their old computers in the attic. Ah, crap, where did I put that? But yeah, if you're still watching this, I'm kind of sorry for wasting 24 minutes of your time uh, rambling about computers, especially old computers. I'm just going to title this computer, another computer video, rambling about computers, and all that nice stuff. And I'll, I actually might make another video, sorry for that little mistake I made right there. But um, for this computer, I might actually make a video uh, sync game, because this computer as a whole actually costed me less than 20 bucks. The only thing that costed money in this computer was the SSD, actually, and that actually costed uh, 16 bucks. 
And I said actually twice, which is not great. Anyhow. Why can I not speak when I'm on video? When I'm not recording a video, I can like just speak with no mistakes, but when I record a YouTube video, it's like, as soon as that happens, something clicks in my little mind, and then after that I get nervous and crap, and then I make mistakes, because I guess anxiety about this sort of stuff. Can't even get the screwdriver head into the screw. Why is my Discord notification going nuts? That's kind of something I gotta check on soon. But yeah, this computer probably cannot run much as it has Intel HD 2000 and it has DirectX 10.1. Only so that can only run older games and like maybe some less demanding newer games that don't need DirectX 11 or newer. And graphics chip on it is equivalent to something like an 8400 GS, maybe a little worse actually. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe I should make a video comparing an 8400 GS to this computer's Intel HD 2000 graphics. I'm not entirely sure. Sadly, I do not have any PCIe slots, like I keep saying, so I can't really add any sort of graphics card to it. But I might buy a USB PCIe uh, adapter so that I can install graphics. Well, not install, but use graphics cards on laptops and desktops without PCIe. Anyway, back to the main part of the video once I put this away and I might not make a video turning it on I might actually turn that to like a part four or five or something uh, but the, yeah this is a multiple part video uh, but yeah I've kind of ran out of words to say uh, talking about this computer and rambling about other computer stuff and just kind of spewing out random words well not random words but you know spewing out stuff that is probably irrelevant in society. Anyway, back to this motherboard and top-line computer, well, computer as a whole. I do not know the actual exact model number of the computer. I do not even have the product key for Windows 98 for this computer, which is rather unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It has a nice little uh, ATX motherboard. And I have it in a nice little case. One day, like I said, I will put Windows 98 on it and mess around with it. And I might test to see if it works. Not sure when. I might do it when I get the time. But for now, this is just an overview of the computer, actually. I can probably, like, I guess, kind of test if it does anything. Give me a second. And actually move the whole computer. Gotta move this uh, box first. But yeah, I'm gonna connect it to the monitor via graphics card. Very powerful 3DFX Voodoo that is legendary forever. And I'm sorry I cannot show you me connecting the VGA port to the graphics card because I'm doing this one-handed and this is kind of difficult. I'm going to turn the monitor on, which is a Dell 1024 by 7... No, no, it's 1280 by 1024 uh, P display. Not a 1024 by 768 display. That would be a very low resolution, and I probably have a computer like that anyway, so. Yeah. Okay. There's a little pluggy plug. I'm looking for one. It's already connected. Yeah, I think I have. Yep. And I heard it pop. I'm going to go get a keyboard and go into the BIOS and actually check if everything is. So I'm too lazy to get a PS2 keyboard because those are under a lot of stuff and I don't have many of them. 
So I got a USB keyboard. Let's see if that works. Um, turns on. Uh, the fan is very loud because, I mean, I think it needs to be oiled. Uh, no display output, oddly. Hmm. That is odd. Let me see. And I know why. I'm an idiot. The VGA cable, or oh, not cable, the VGA um, is not connected to the monitor. Probably why some of my motherboards that I was were testing did not display an output because I was kind of an idiot and had no VGA. Connected. Let me fix that. Now, obviously, that would be a pretty big problem. See if it turns on now. Still nothing. Hmm. Wait, give me a sec. I'm not showing you anything yet. See, is the graphics card heating up? Yep. Odd. Sometimes Dell monitors are a little picky though. So, let me change monitors. This might become a longer video. So, it's just my Dell monitor being a complete jerk. Uh, this computer turns on. Uh, it has a Pentium 3 223 uh, E. I think it's 233 megahertz. At 233 megahertz, that's what it says. Um, yeah, it's just my Dell monitor being a complete jerk. Uh, this trusty, dusty Acer AL 1511 that has uh, um, costed me four bucks at the thrift store. And I bought it like four years ago, still going strong, VGA only, EPIC, uh, AGP, PCIe, no, not PCIe, DER, PCI, ISA system, with 294,912 uh, kilobytes of memory, that works. Um, let's go to setup, so I'm going to press delete, where's the delete key, and the USB keyboard works, voila, that works. I'm in the BIOS now. Let's see. I'm just gonna mess around. Oh, pretty toasty. Let's see. Yep, that's pretty toasty. The fan is really loud too because the ball bearing looks like it's going bad. Um, let's see, I've not used this sort of BIOS in a very long time. No ID hard drive sector. So this is still in the kilobyte section, <laughs> or not section, but kilobytes of memory, not megabytes. So this has 293,888 kilobytes. So that's like 293 megs or something. Well, more like 294 if you round up. But yeah, that's not a lot of memory. It's half decent. It's like able to run Windows XP, I guess, and, uh, yeah, I might mess around with this computer more. At least I know it works. It should work. I've tested it, and the Voodoo works, I guess, a little bit, and the CPU works a bit, although it's very, like, loud. The CPU cooler is very loud. Anyway, I'm gonna just turn off this computer. Yeah. 
so anyway I'm gonna end the video um, yeah if you like this video you can like it if you don't like it you can dislike it and if you want to subscribe for more you can subscribe for more uh, this is just a big video of me rambling and having many many verbal mistakes from my uh, very like irrational anxiety from talking on a camera or talking in public because I'm unfortunately extremely bad at talking in public or on camera and instead of talking like person to person which like act like I'm talking person to person but I mean that doesn't really work for me but anyway uh, if you made it to the end of this video of my very 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 long winded rambling which went on for 35 minutes and 48 49 seconds or well actually I'll split it up into multiple pieces that will I guess, um, kind of being a little series. Actually, I might just edit the video and turn it as a, turn it in as a whole video and upload it to YouTube. But anyway, um, yeah, this is the end of the video. It was supposed to be a 10 minute video, but I instead made it a 35 minute video, wasting my time uh, and your time too. I'm so sorry about that. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you like it, you can like it. If you don't like it, you can dislike it. And if you want to subscribe, you can subscribe for more. Uh, bye. And I'll make more computer videos, videos like this that are hopefully better than this video, which I made at like 10 o'clock at night or 10.30 now. It's probably 11. I'm not sure. But anyway, thanks for watching. And bye. I'm, I'm going to stop being long-winded.